our prime responsibility is to see that each pilot who desires to fly has separation and the will not interfere with any other aircraft flying. Uh, to do this, we have 34 radar scopes, and obviously when we have a million odd aircraft a year, this is a tremendous processing procedure, and I'm sure that you have seen this bank of computers here that have taken over largely all the responsibilities of presenting the flight information to the controller who must separate these aircraft. Now these computers are located so that they will put this flight plan directly from the computer before the controller without any manual working at all. In the past, this was done manually, and you can understand that the processing of approximately four million flight strips a year was a tremendous bookkeeping situation. Also, uh, I might uh, jokingly say the computer has no nerves, it doesn't make mistakes, it writes legibly, and its wife hasn't chased him out the door before it came to work. So this is a tremendous improvement over the human capability. Our um, plants were the most modern and complete type of treatment plants that we knew how to build when they were built. But as we look at the future and what use we want to put the environment to, then we're going to have to do better. Uh, our um, pilot plant, our research plant, which we built, was our first step. And instead of building just the same type of plant that we've always had, it would barely meet these criteria, we realized we were going to have to have a better type of treatment plant and also, we couldn't afford to throw away a $20 million investment that we've got, that it has to be upgraded. Uh, it's my feeling, uh, and certainly in discussing this with the board and keeping them aware of what we uh, are doing, uh, because we have not proceeded without them knowing this, uh, that uh, the steps that we're taking are sound and will have far-reaching um, uh, uh, importance throughout the state, because there are many cities in the state that have exactly the same type of treatment plant that we do, which while it was considered the best at the time and acceptable, just isn't good enough for the future. I appeared today before the City Council 
to let them know that this committee had been formed, that it was functioning, and that hopefully we would be able to make a recommendation to the full board by the latter part of this week. You're going very strongly for the young vote. Are you pinning your chances on uh, people under 30? Well, there's a tremendous number of voters under 30 in the state now, and I'd say that without their support, or without certainly a majority of that, why, uh, I doubt that I would win. But young people want change. So young people want new answers, and uh, I hope that the programs I can spell out, like congressional reform, ethics reform, voter uh, electoral college reform, I hope all these things will be helpful to get these people interested in politics. It often has been said that justice moves slowly, and it would certainly appear that's the case in Sulphur Springs. Some six months ago, I stood in this same downtown square in Sulphur Springs and reported on a number of irregularities in the city operation here. Those irregularities range from misapplication of city funds to the sale of a city-owned tractor mower by a city employee who incidentally pocketed the money. The irregularities included false billings by a Sulphur Springs auto dealer for repairs to city vehicles, which in fact did not even exist. At that time, I urged Sulphur Springs authorities and the city's leaders to thoroughly investigate the situation and to take appropriate action. Instead of taking any kind of action, some of those same leaders threatened to go to my boss and try to get me fired, apparently thinking that perhaps that would solve their problem. It's six months later now, and the same problem is still here. But now, at least there are signs that something may be done. The FBI has been investigating the Sulphur Springs operation for the past couple of weeks, looking for possible misapplication of federal funds and mail fraud in connection with the sending of false statements to the city. It's still too early yet to determine what federal action might be taken or what might result from this investigation. From a local standpoint, one disturbing factor is that a grand jury was supposed to be impaneled here last January. This is March 23rd, and it still hasn't been impaneled. And if any city in Texas needs a grand jury at work right now, it would appear that that city is Sulphur Springs. Only two indictments have come out of the Sulphur Springs situation thus far, and there appear to be other clear-cut violations of law which deserve grand jury attention. Of those two former city employees who have been indicted, neither has yet gone to trial. The latest development here was the sudden resignation this past weekend of County Attorney John Perry. Perry simply quit his post without any explanation. Now there are reports that the State Bar Association as well as the FBI are looking into the Sulphur Springs situation. In addition, I am told that one Sulphur Springs citizen has gone to Austin to talk to the Attorney General, Crawford Martin, about the matter here. So there may yet be some action to come out of Sulphur Springs, although unfortunately it now appears that that action will be motivated from the outside and not from within. This is Tommy Ayers reporting for Channel 8 News from Sulphur Springs.